Our province continues to ramp up its vaccine rollout, getting more needles in arms. At the same time, there are many people still waiting for their second dose. So how protected are you after just one dose? For some clarification and perhaps some reassurance, we're joined by Allison Kelvin. She's a virologist at Vito in Saskatoon. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much for having me. So there is still a really big push to get that first dose into everyone, but there is a big question on everyone's minds, and that is how protected are you after just one dose? Yeah, such a good question. On the top of everyone's mind, we want to know if we can open things up after the first dose, but really you are fully protected after the second dose. Um, some data, though, is coming in showing that there are high levels of protection after the first dose, um, between the estimates between 70 and 92 percent effective after one dose. But the question comes in, we don't know how long that protection lasts after the first dose, which is why you're seen as fully protected after you have those two doses. I guess that sort of leads me to my second question, which is, uh, there's a lot of people waiting for that second shot. How long are they protected with their immunity response? Yeah, so we don't really know. Some studies have been done, and it seems that you do have high levels of antibodies after two months, but it's going to take time uh, for us to figure that out. So companies had their own recommended timelines between doses. Canada is planning up to four months between shots. Will that make a difference or are we seeing any issues because of that change? Well, so it's quite interesting as a vaccinologist and virologist, we've known for a long time that the longer you wait between your first dose and your second dose of a vaccine, actually you have better protection in the long run. You just have this kind of gap in the middle. So I don't think delaying your second dose is really going to affect your overall protection when you receive your second dose. Oh, interesting. I think people will probably be reassured by that. As more and more people get immunized, is there a threshold where you think we could safely ease restrictions and consider ourselves as a community reasonably protected by vaccines? Yeah, another really important question. I think what we need to be looking for is the number of cases that we're seeing per day and our averages per week. When we see that start to drop, then um, we can determine if that's associated with the number of people vaccinated. Are we having that decrease of transmission? Are people ultimately being protected? So I think that's what we need to be looking for when we start uh, forming public policy. Some people have seen some side effects after getting their shots, and I've been asked this question a lot. I am not qualified to answer it, but you are. Is a person's reaction to the shot at all correlated with how they would have reacted if they actually got COVID-19? Yeah, another really interesting question. I think the way you respond to a vaccine and the way you respond to a viral infection are two totally different things. So a vaccine is supposed to help your body learn what a virus looks like without you having to be infected. But of course the virus infects you and kind of utilizes your body for its own means. So there's two different purposes for um, between a viral infection and a vaccination and really how you respond to each of them probably aren't associated at all. All right, that's good to know. Allison, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks so much again for having me. It's been a pleasure. Allison Kelvin is a virologist at the Vaccine and Infectious Disease Organization, also known as Vito, in Saskatoon.